Hello! Welcome back or welcome if you are new to my booktube channel Goddess of Gore. My name is Vix and I like to talk about horror, thriller, sometimes fantasy and occasionally sci-fi books every week. Today I want to talk about all of the books I read in the month of May. Which were my top three and what was the biggest surprise? And there's rather a lot to get through. So, we'd better get on with it. Now, I will say that I did take part in two readathons this month Horror Mayhem, an event during the whole of the month, and Thrill Till the Weekend, which happened at the end of the month for three days, starting Friday the 27th. So I will put cards up for those when I quickly run through them so you can watch the full opinions there and below if you want. So, as ever, I go through the books in the order I read them, kicking off the month with Slugs by Sean Hudson and Carmilla by J. Sheridan Le Fanu. And these were the first of four picks for Horror Mayhem. So I will link the wrap up video up there and needless to say I loved them. Very nostalgic to be reading the first Sean Hudson book and Carmilla is such a classic and as I mentioned in the wrap-up I didn't think I had read this book before but it soon became apparent that I had which was nice. Then I read a book that I was so looking forward to getting and that was The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, a fantasy steeped in Russian folklore. I was instantly transported to the tough winters in the Russian forest thanks to Catherine's wonderful writing with Basha and her family, the wicked, devout stepmother and the cunning priest living in the shed, a winter demon and Slavic fairy tale creatures. I adored this book so much and I cannot wait to get to the next two but I'm saving them for this winter. Next was Jade City. Ah, poor Jade City. Ah, by Fonda Lee and I have to say I wasn't, I wasn't bowled over. I was expecting super gangsters but I got a lot of drama and I was finding it all a bit slow. And don't forget I had tried to read this book twice before and quit after around 50 pages and yes I suppose the pacing does speed up as the book goes on. And I can see the Godfather comparison of course, this is a book about warring families for power and I will continue the series but only because I already own the next two books. But I do hope that Jade War improves the trilogy. Then I read The Ballad of Black Tom, which was for week three of the Horror Mayhem Challenge, which was a very well-written cosmic horror novella by Victor Laval. It follows Thomas Tester, a man with the reputation of being a procurer of occult artifacts, and a millionaire seeks him out for one hell of a job, literally. Then I listened to book five in the Spell Slinger series, Queen Slayer by Sebastian de Castell, narrated by Joe Jameson. And this, as always, follows Kellen, estranged and on the run from his powerful family, always in search of a cure for his shadow black curse, with his trusty animal partner, Rikus the Squirrel Cat. In this instalment, we see Kellen brought before a young queen of Daraman for treason and manages to get away with the death penalty by becoming the queen's chief card playing teacher. Kellen and Riker soon learn of a plot to take the throne from the Queen and so begins the usual deception, trickery, politics and death. There was a particularly nasty baddie in this book, the White Binder, and he was brilliantly evil. I then started but kept putting down, so I was reading it on and off for days and days and it felt like months and months because it was terrible and that was my week four pick for horror mayhem ritual by david pinner it was awful some parts were just nonsense and seemed to me to be put in afterwards without any thought of where it was going and yes parts of it were 
good. The story itself, as a premise, looks good, sounds good, but the book as a whole is not. It took a while to get recognisable to the inspiration for The Wicker Man, so I will give it one star. And the ending was different to the film, so it gets another star for that. I can't say I didn't know it was awful going in. I just didn't know how bad it was going to be. But anyway, that was the last book for The Mayhem. So go and watch my wrap up after. It was then the turn of Thrill Till The Weekend. And again, you can watch my wrap up here and here for a longer video of all the books that I had read. So I chose to read Elizabeth's recommendations for her best horror short stories for this 72 hour readathon and I managed to get through eight out of nine and the ninth, Tender is the Flesh, I will try to get to in later in the month of June. So what did I read then? Well, the last case at the baggage auction by Eric J. Gugnard was a cosmic weird horror book about a couple of guys on a get rich quick scheme of gambling and auctions so when Joey picks up a gramophone and some weird chanting records that anyone who listens to can't get them out of their head, Charlie begins to investigate. It pretty much gets weird from then on and I'm not a big fan of weird horror, but Eric's writing was amazing and the story did grip me. I also read The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn and I had never heard of this until Elizabeth's video and you know what? I'm going to recommend it to everyone all of the time because this was stunning. Abruptly ends but keeps you on the edge of your seat the whole way through. This story will bug you for weeks. A shady unnamed palm reader who uses her own palm for men in the back of her shop sees an easy scam when a rich woman comes into a shop in the hope she can rid her house of a sinister presence. But once she starts to cleanse the house, she begins to wonder who is scamming who. And then it went a bit downhill for a while with Nothing But Blackened Teeth by Cassandra Core. And this was another book that bored the pants off me. Again, the premise and cover piqued my interest, but it was such a letdown. A group of friends, two of which are due to get married, they all stay in a mansion which, according to legend, is haunted by a ghost bride. This book really wasn't for me, and I didn't think it was particularly horror. And then another strange one that I didn't think was horror, but beautifully written, was Comfort Me With Apples by Catherine M. Valente. It was doing okay up until about the 80% mark following Sophia and her suspiciously perfect life, which had a few odd occurrences, like she was living in a house that was made for someone else. And from her descriptions, she was tiny, like doll size, which was just off. At first I thought it was going in the direction of Stefford Wives and Handmaid's Tale, but no, I was wrong. So very wrong. And I'm just glad that those two books were short. Then there was The Turn of the Screw by Henry James and I decided the font on my very old copy was way too small for my eyes. So I went to YouTube and listened to it instead, read by Tony Walker, who did a marvellous job. Again, I wasn't too taken with this, although the story itself is fantastic about a young, inexperienced governess who gets a job looking after two orphans in the care of their uncle in a mansion called Bly Manor. The brother and sister are weird and creepy, as they usually are in these massive old houses, and the poor unnamed governess starts seeing ghosts who she thinks are taking the souls of the children in her care. Is she going mad? Are the kids really possessed by ghosts? Or are there really spooks hanging around the estate? Well, I don't want to spoil the ending in case you haven't read it before, but I will say that I have enjoyed the adaptations and inspired films more than this. So, three novellas left, and it was Blanky by Keelan Patrick Burke next, and this book was another so well-written book. I thought 
this would be a haunting book dealing with the grieving parents of Robin. Steve and Lexi have since separated and able to cope with the loss of their child until Steve hears noises in the now empty child's room only to find the blanket they thought they had buried with their child has returned to them. Sounds like the opening to a ghost story, right? And in fact, this did remind me of a part in the film Ghost Stories by Andy Nyman and Jeremy Dyson. And as a side note, if you haven't seen it, you really should. So, horrific events ensue, terrible nightmares, and also more information unfolds on the story of Steve, Lexi, and little Robin. Mm. Things have gotten worse since we last spoke. Hmm. Hmm. By Eric Lavrocka. Has a reputation all of its own, so it came of no surprise that this turned weird, and it turned weird hard and... But what I was surprised about was how far it went weird. It was a book about Zoe and Agnes meeting through an online forum when Zoe makes a post selling an antique apple peeler. This book goes places that maybe sway the book away from straight up horror. It's definitely shockingly deviant. And we all know if it's shocking or disgusting, it's horror by definition. So, if you want to know more about the not okay world of Zoe and Agnes, then you should definitely read this book. And then the last book of the month was In the Tall Grass by Stephen King and Joe Hill. And this was another fantastic book. I should add that this was also the thrill to the weekend's buddy watch, but I didn't have time to join in. So, the month was really a story of highs and lows, wasn't it? I had never read this book before, only ever seen the Netflix adaptation, so I was very surprised when the two weren't exactly alike. Just like the film though, it follows close-knit brother and sister as they take a road trip to their aunt and uncle's house across the country. When they are passing a field of tall grass, they hear someone shouting for help. They stop their car, assess the situation, a boy and his mom are lost in the grass and can't find their way out. Decide to do the right thing and offer aid. And then what happens over the rest of the book is nothing short of a fever dream. And I loved it. It seems I say this every month, but I'll say it one more time for those at the back. Stephen King sure can write the hell out of a short story. So, what were the top three of the month? Play the music. Boop. In third place is my nostalgic read, Slugs by Sean Hudson. In second place, and I really struggled to put this in second place, and that was The Bear and the Nightingale, which normally would have been the first place, but it literally got bumped down by... First place, The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. This book was superb, it really was, so I have Elizabeth to thank for the recommendation. And for the biggest surprise, in the Tall Grass by Stephen King and Joe Hill. I really did think I knew the story, but well, it just goes to show what assuming does. So that's it. May is well and truly wrapped up. I did have so much fun this month and I read a lot of good books and got to take part in two really fun reader thumbs that I will be marking my calendar for next year. Thank you so much for watching. I am always amazed and grateful that you do. Like and subscribe if you want to. And remember, devils are like good dogs. They always come when you call them. Until next time, bye bye. Come boy, come on, come on. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good little demon. Yes you are, yes you are.